It's a blessing to be with you here on this Monday. I trust you had a great Palm Sunday uh, yesterday and that uh, you're in rejoicing in this season of the year. I love to make the most of Easter because it's our holiday, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we need to make much of it and we need to speak boldly about what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's just a joy to talk about all that Christ has done. In Matthew chapter 20, the Lord is foretelling his own passion, his own um, series of events that are going to occur for the salvation of the world. And of course, the disciples had a hard time really understanding all of that. And in verse 28 of chapter 20, after they are trying to vie over who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom with the Lord Jesus, he says in verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. As we think about the cross, as we think about the resurrection, we need to realize that Jesus Christ came solely for that purpose. Nothing about his life here on this earth was for himself in the sense of any kind of selfish purpose. Obviously, God has no selfishness as we know it. He came to glorify the Father. He came to accomplish the will of God, the will that the triune God had established before man was ever created, and he came to give his life a ransom for all of us. He came to minister, not to be ministered unto. And friends, we have his mission now. And frankly, if we want to be free of the pressures and the discouragements in our life, we've got to get to this attitude, and only by the grace of God can we get there. Our life is not to be ministered to but for us to minister, serve others. Think about how much we're aware of what people do for us. Think about how we want our needs met. Think about how we're focused on how things go for us. The expectations in a marriage cause great problems when the husband thinks a wife should do certain things and a wife thinks that a husband should fulfill certain things in his role. And when they're not happening, they get frustrated. And they forget that they need to unconditionally fulfill the biblical roles that God gave to them. Same thing. Children have these expectations of their parents. And the parents have expectations of their children. And we all are concerned about what people think about us and what happens to us. And so if we're really going to get free, if we're going to be encouraged regularly in life, we've got to have the same heart that the Lord Jesus had. And that was that he came to serve he came, came to give his life a ransom. And when we think each day about giving our life rather than getting, then we're free. When we have the heart of the Savior to fulfill his purpose, not ours, then we're free. Frankly, folks, the only reason we get discouraged is that we're focused on what we want and how we want life to be. But as we go through trials, as we go through setbacks, as we go through the things that can easily overwhelm us, if we remember it's not about us, it's about God and accomplishing his purpose, we can get free from those kind of triggers in our mind and heart that really bring us down. We really should live consistently with the joy that comes from the Lord because we're here to serve him. And each day we've got to take it from his hand and accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. So this wonderful verse, as the Lord's looking to the cross, ought to stir each one of us that God wants us to minister, not to be ministered unto.